I want to take a quick look at the economics surrounding the EcoFlow stream series and let's see if in reality the payback on a system, the return on investment is better on something like this compared to a conventional system. So I'm going to start with this basic package which is essentially the same as what I've got an EcoFlow Stream Ultra and a Stream AC Pro parallel cable but they are now shop shipping it with four 520 watt panels. I've received 450 watt panels. They've got it up on their website at the moment for two grand. There'll be a link in the description which will give you a discount off that as well but let's stick with that £2,000 figure because that's going to make it easy to calculate a return on investment. So ultimately we get over you know nearly 2.1 kilowatt peak of solar panels and nearly four kilowatt hours of storage so what i've done for a little experiment and for a little bit of fun is i've used chat gpt to see how good it is at some of this stuff so i've asked it i've said can you use the pbgis tool to calculate solar generation and told it what i want to do and hopefully that's not a spoiler alert because i've already shown that on the channel with the four 150 watt panels that I've got and um, I've used PVJ GIS a lot uh, but I thought this would be a little bit of fun and perhaps for those people who don't know all the technical in and outs PVGIS I think it's not a steep learning curve but maybe some this might be easier and more accessible to people so it's just an option there um, unfortunately chat GPT got it a bit wrong so um, unfortunately PVGIS doesn't use uh, 225 degrees it in fact uses uh, 45 as if you click on here it will show you that they consider zero degrees south 90 degrees west and minus 90 as east so if you want southwest you need to put 45 in here um, anyway that's just the way it goes so chat gpt and uh pvgis come out with slightly different numbers ultimately um chat gpt says around one megawatt a thousand kilowatt hours per year and talks about the range etc and shows the kind of breakdown per month which is interesting, the seasonal distribution. But if we compare that to um, PVGIS, PVGIS is a bit more optimistic. Oh, I better scroll down so you can actually see what we're looking at here. I can't scroll down. That's not helpful, is it? Let's move this little screen grab up here. You can see that they're estimating 1,275. So 25% uplift, 25, 30% uplift. And uh, we we shall see which one of these is more accurate in terms of calculation. But nevertheless, uh, an interesting little experiment. So anyway, that's a bit of a sidetrack. Now we know roughly how much uh, we should expect to generate. That's, uh, you know, a thousand kilowatt hours per year. If we can self-consume all of that and we avoid peak rate consumption at 26p, then we know that that's £260 per year of electricity that we can save ourselves. So um, it also runs you through some of the details here of how to calculate it yourself, how to... Um, it can also generate a PVGIS-style report. ChatGPT is very good at this stuff. I used to have a reasonable relationship with Gemini, but more recently I've been enjoying the company of ChatGPT a little bit more um, and been experimenting, but you do need to fact check nearly everything that these AI models spit out. Um, so I asked it um, if I charge the battery every single day uh, on the off-peak rate and then I can, then I basically didn't need to use the peak rate, what would be my savings? And um, it's very simple calculations. I didn't expect ChatGPT to get this one wrong. But it breaks it down. It's quite nice that it's going to cost you 13p per day to charge and, you know, that's going to save 50p and then ultimately your saving per day is 36p and um, times that by 365 days and then you get to 133 pounds uh, what chat gpt didn't consider or in this instance was losses but uh, you know for round trip efficiency 
and it doesn't consider standby losses. Here it says typically 90%. I think that's a bit optimistic. I think on a system like the stream, considering the standby losses and the conversion losses, I think you'd be probably closer to 80%. But let's say that this £130 goes down to uh, £120, for example. So £120 per year that we can use by charging up overnight on a cheap rate and we're looking at something like 200 pounds per year in savings from the solar generation so if we say 320 pounds per year and then we've got a 2000 pound price tag here that gives us something like a six year uh, payback return on investment on this particular system now that isn't too far removed from a typical proper installation is it i now want to show you the difference if we step away from my idea of wall mounting solar panels and optimize those solar panels for south facing and for the most generation possible so what i've done here on this one is i've actually put in the 2.08 that you would be getting from the four 520 watt panels and then i have asked it to optimize the slope and the azimuth so that uh, we can get the most from this little solar setup and this is what it comes up with and we know that generally for where I am in the UK the general rule of thumb is that one kilowatt peak should produce roughly 1000 kilowatt hours that's the pessimistic way to do it that's the very basic rule of thumb for a south facing array for peak production so no surprises that a 2.08 kilowatt peak system is going to produce for us to oh i'm dragging on the wrong screen what am i doing here 2217 kilowatt hours per year if somehow we could self-consume all of that energy we would be looking at 576 pounds great british pounds worth of energy compared to a peak rate of 26 pence so all of a sudden that changes the sums considerably. Now we're looking at with the importing overnight, we're looking more like £700 per year. Now with a £700 per year return, that all of a sudden turns this set into having a payback below three years, which is quite remarkable. You would not get that from a professionally installed solar system now of course on top of this what we haven't considered on top of the two thousand pounds is you need to have at least one of these units needs to be hardwired into a breaker into a dedicated circuit you'll have to have a qualified electrician to do that those are fees on top of that um, you should really have a g98 as well g98s are not expensive and not difficult and you can diy do that you don't need to pay an electrician to do a g98 for you um, all of that being said we're still looking in the region of a three-year return on investment provided you can orientate your panels for the optimum solar generation and you can charge on a cheap overnight tariff I hope that's useful for you and I hope that kind of gives you a framework for doing your own calculations and also looking at some of these other systems here because there's they they vary in costs considerably but um, there is a system for everyone here and of course more panels more uh, battery storage units and typically with most things with solar there's kind of economies of scale but in some cases you may see diminishing returns so just do your calculations thank you for watching like comment subscribe and share this with other random people all around the world on this thing that connects us called the internet farewell